ABC. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. We begin tonight with all the clamor about money and trade between the U.S. and Japan. When the news came out yesterday that a group in Washington State, led by Japanese investors, was trying to buy the Seattle Mariners baseball team, the first reaction from some Americans was, how dare they? Well, today, some calmer thoughts. The governor of Washington and several members of that state's congressional delegation say they're all for it. And in Tokyo today, the Japanese prime minister said that the relationship between the United States and Japan is much too important to let it deteriorate. Here's ABC's Bill Redick. In a nationally televised speech that opened the new session of parliament today, the prime minister called for a truce. The United States faces some problems, he said. It behooves Japan to make every effort to cooperate with America. In Kyoto, the president of Nintendo said that's what his pitch to play ball in Seattle is all about and displayed two letters to prove it. One from the governor of Washington state that asks for help. The other from a Republican senator that echoes the request. So I decided it would be in my best interest to help them out, he says, but it is still up in the air. At the Japanese foreign ministry, the deal was characterized as corporate goodwill. It's a good idea, because Nintendo is making big money in the United States, and therefore it must uh, uh, make uh, community life more interesting. Interesting and controversial. Japanese television networks tonight headlined the story and the debate it has raised. For an entire week, the Japanese have witnessed what one commentator here calls the new Pacific War. The storm created by the Speaker of Parliament demeaning American workers. The cancellation of the Sumitomo mass transit contract in Los Angeles. And cars. These scenes of an auto dealership in Detroit encouraging customers to smash a Japanese pickup truck got major attention here and generated a lot of resentment. I, I think it, uh, American people had a bad image. So I'm afraid uh, the future will be happening again. The feeling here is that America is schizophrenic about Japanese help, desperately needing Japanese money because of its huge deficit, but rejecting it when it means Japanese ownership of anything American. Bill Redeker, ABC News, Tokyo. Just one other note about all this Buy America talk going around. On Tuesday, a small town in upstate New York voted to buy an excavating machine from John Deere, even though a similar model from Komatsu of Japan was $15,000 cheaper. Well, they're looking again. It turns out that most of Komatsu's excavators are made in Illinois. And while the John Deere engine comes from the U.S., the machine itself is made in Japan. In other words, it's not that simple. In the competition with Japan, the American automobile industry, as we all know, has been one of the most visible and vocal losers. Last month, General Motors announced plans to lay off 74,000 workers and close 21 plants, which has turned the last few weeks into a nightmare for the people in Ypsilanti, Michigan, and Arlington, Texas. GM makes cars in both cities. Only one plant will survive. ABC's Chris Bury reports tonight that the struggle to be that one is intense. The campaigns are in full swing. In Texas, the billboards are up, the flags flying. Bumper stickers out, the promises made. Our proposal will show General Motors that Texans have the guts to put their money where their mouth is. In Michigan, the people of Ypsilanti are rallying around the Willow Run plant, forming a task force, complete with mascot, petitioning their politicians. I believe these jobs belong in Michigan. And I will fight with you to keep them here, each and every one. The stakes are enormous. In Ypsilanti, unemployment is already near 12%. And closing the Willow Run plant could put 7,000 more people out of work. In Texas, things are just as bad. Losing the Arlington plant could cost nearly 8,000 jobs. The state figures Texas would lose a billion dollars as the impact ripples through an already stagnant economy. I think maybe be the last straw as far as uh, bad economic news that has just been unfolding for us now month after month for, for far too long. To save the Arlington plant, local officials have offered GM tax breaks and incentives worth up to $10 million. 
the state has promised even more money if GM agrees to stay in Arlington making cars that run on natural gas. Michigan has vowed to top any offer Texas makes. Ypsilanti's city manager accuses GM of playing the two regions like a whipsaw. It looks to me like they're trying to wring every possible concession, every possible uh, buck they can out of the local communities and the state government. I don't think that's really the right thing to do. Executives here at General Motors declined to be interviewed, but denied playing Michigan against Texas for the best deal. According to GM, the decision will hinge on which plant can produce the best cars at the lowest cost. For thousands of GM employees and their families, the waiting has left their lives in limbo. Bob and Jesse Hall both work at Willow Run. It puts a lot of pressure on us just because we don't know. We're on edge all the time, a lot of tension. You know, rumors are flying constantly, and it's, it's really hard. For Brenda Sims and her husband, both employees in Texas, the competition with Michigan has led to hard feelings. When you start talking about your jobs and your home, and, and you, you start thinking, you, you want it. You want it. You don't want them to have it up there. Why should we have to go through that? That's not fair. Just go ahead and close one of them. General Motors is expected to announce which one by March a decision that could maintain the heartbeat of one city and break the heart of another. Chris Bury, ABC News, Detroit. On Wall Street today, the Dow Jones Industrials gained six points to close at 32.32. The trading was heavy. For the week, stocks lost a little over 32 points. In a moment, the United States and Germany go headhunting in Russia for nuclear scientists. In the other news, the Democratic candidate Bill Clinton, being the front runner, has drawbacks. And our person of the week, never at a loss for words.